Oh, I've been looking forward to this. Oh, that I need extra projects or anything like that. I've got plenty. But these are always such fun projects. I think. Anyways. More heat tree tubing. More audio. It looks like it. What the heck? <laughs> Those are sensors for measuring conducting conductance in skin and measuring voltages. <laughs> are we making an EKG machine? Or heart rate monitoring. Heart rate monitoring at the very least. Yes, 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 yes. Heart rate monitors. <laughs> very nice, very nice, very nice. Okay, so um, we've got a nano, which is fairly small. Some resistors, an OLED. As a daughter, a daughter board for the uh, for the nano with audio or um, amplifiers. I wonder what kind of amplifiers we're going to be using. So the EKG, ECG leads and EMG, uh, hmm, mechanical, uh, magnetic. I don't know. Um, would attach here and then there's a couple of um, finely tuned amplifiers that will drive a, a analog signal and then there's probably an a to, uh, a to d converter in this thing somewhere either using the uh, built-in a to d converter or um or something else that's a speaker is there anything here? Is what is this? Oh, that's the OLED. Okay. Um, I don't know. Well, let's pull the let's pull these parts out of the bag and see if there is um, uh, an, a, an external A to D converter. Hmm, can't read that. Need magnifying glass. TLO72s. I think those are op amps. Yeah. And this is a TLC2270. Well, wait, there's, there's always a box that tells. Yeah, dual op amps. That's the 072s. Um, that's the op amp that um, was that uh, Mr. Carlson's lab, his, his first. Yeah, yeah, meow, meow. Um, his first. His first. Um, project in, in, in the education sessions that he puts on was a seven, an 072 op amp and a um, light bulb um, doing a, a wean bridge um, oscillator. So yeah, that's what that is. And then instrumentation amplifiers. Yeah, that's a couple of those. There's those two, a voltage regulator, switched capacitor voltage converter. It's like, yeah, instrumentation, some, some high precision, um, low low input voltage um, sensitive amplifiers is what my guess is. I am 106 and the, and the 623. So we'll see what, see what those, uh, those bring us. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Building an ECG. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a really good one. Hacker boxes, you've done it again. So th this is nice because it's got a couple of interesting uh, componentry in it. In particular, it's got um, a instrumentation amplifier, which is a differential amplifier, an amplifier that um, uses the difference between two signals, amplifies that relative to a reference, and rejects whatever common signal there is on both of them. So it, it's just analyzing the difference. So um, it, you've got perhaps some signal source here, and you've got two sensors. And 
this signal source is going to be inter intercepted by these sensors and you want to see what the difference between those two signals is. So is it closer to one so that the signal should theoretically be stronger when it's closer to the sensor or is it closer to another one? And measuring that difference between those two signals is what you're trying to do. And so the thing that we're going to be measuring with the um, with the hacker box is we're going to be measuring the electrical impulses that get sent out by the heart from various places on the body and measuring the difference in, I forget whether it's resistance or capacitance, but in any event, you can measure the difference between the, those two signals. Now, obviously, they're going to be pretty faint. There's not a lot of um, electricity that's being generated, but there is enough that if you amplify it and subtract out the noise, uh, the electrical noise that happens naturally, you can at, you can get an impression of that signal at the output. But then it needs several different um, stages of amplification. And that's what the various operational amplifiers do. And so the I, I haven't taken a look at the schematic yet, but because um, I was I couldn't find it. But anyways, so there's um, a very nice precision Burr Brown, um, it, and it looks like a Burr Brown too, um, op, uh, amplifier that's the um i n i n a 106 109 where'd the card go i can never remember these things yeah the i n a 106 and so that is um a precision um i think 10 10 times uh but very very low distortion and then there's a differential amplifier that we were talking about here that measures the difference of the signal. So you 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 find your signal here with a very sensitive um, instrumentation amplifier. So that's probably going to go in. Well, I don't. Looking at the board, I'd have to track traces around. But it, if it's laid out logically, this will be where these um, signals come in. And so you've got your front end here, and then you've got various stages before you get to your um, your analog to digital converter and then you produce a display using your microcontroller so um it and then yeah you got to power it there is one thing that we we should uh, we should note though and that's they make a point of it on the website so i'm going to make a point of it here usb battery switch um if you're using a laptop and it's on battery you um you ha and then you plug it into this board. What will affect and and if you connect the leads to uh, a human or whatever you're measuring, what will happen is effectively there will be a connection through the microcontroller to that laptop or to the computer. And then if you plug the computer into the wall, there is a theoretical connection between the um, the wall one line voltage coming out of the wall and the um the subject under test and that's a v should be avoided at all costs so the usb battery switch will disconnect the th the lines that connect the microcontroller to the amplifier stages so that there is no contact between um line and subject now that's a pretty sketchy um system <laughs> if you're asking me be, because there's no physical interconnects that pre prevent you from plugging it in but um at least it's something at least it's something so let's start soldering <laughs> Okay, so the input side, in power supply side works. And the way that this circuit is designed is we've got a five volt, where's that focused? We've got a five volt regulator here, and we've got this maximum 1044 uh, is a voltage inverter. So from our nine volt, we have a negative nine volt coming out of pin five on this guy. 
it's the same chip that's used in the Fluke multimeter, if I'm thinking correctly, but I'm probably not. But anyways, it, same sort of idea. It's a voltage inverter. One of the things it does, it also doubles and halves the voltage and, and you can adjust. But anyways, so this gives us a plus or minus um, 9 volt um, rail, and then this gives us 5 volts for running our micro. Somewhere they probably should have said that this is also not a diagnostic device. But I didn't see that. Okay, so we've got the Snowflakes uh, sketch running. So that means that this part of the board, power supply is working, at least over to here. And now we just have to populate the, um, the amplifiers and, dare we say, hook it up to a human. Anybody who had a BlackBerry at any point in the, um, wait, when would that have been? Late 90s? Gosh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that was close. Okay, so already, it, it, you've got a breakout game. That's ah, worth the price of admission right there. These switches are horrible. These are just, man, oh man, really? Um... I'm going to replace them with something a little more scoopum in the same category. Um, I think they'll fit. Yeah, they'll just fit. Perfect. Especially since this is actually a safety switch. The one that disconnects the, uh, the microprocessor in case it's connected to USB. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, that's much better. It actually feels like switches. So we are essentially bags of conductive water that generate electrical signals in order to um, spasm our um, our muscles and somehow our our brain, which is also a pile of electrical signals, is able to control that twitching to such a degree that we, that we can actually use our hands, which <laughs> really is quite remarkable when you think about it, even just for a little bit. Okay, so you can actually see the, um, at least the, uh, what is that, diastolic? I forget which um, of the signals that is. But anyways, you can definitely see a, a distinct um, pattern. Now, um, that was measuring using um, peripheral uh, traces, or peripheral sensors, so at the extremity. So in left and right wrist, and then the back of the left hand. I switched over to using um, uh, uh, the sensors roughly placed on the torso. So then you have your um, left rib cage, you have your um, right rib cage, and then down um, near the um, near the pelvis, and that gave a different bit of a different signal. Still, it's pretty noisy, and um, but st definitely a heart. You, you can definitely see that there's something going on there electrically. So yeah, pretty cool. I kind of like it actually. So, the ECG was in, well, uh, dis discovered in the 19th century, so like over 100 years ago, well over 100 years ago. And the, the first um, ECGs were um, direct measuring the galvanic response from different points on a human body, and then correlating that um, galvanic response using just direct measurement of the electrical signals using a very sensitive galvanometer, like in a meter movement something something like not unlike that but um the strip recorder which was basically moving a needle in response to some very weak electrical stimulus would produce the characteristic um beat pattern and they correlated that with the um with the heart and uh from there was born the ecg and you were able to actually diagnose or actually see the electrical s visualize 
the electrical signals that were triggering the various beatings of the heart. And so, yeah, you know, you can pull a heart out of somebody, well, and not have them live, but you can do experiments on um, hearts that have come out of recently um, deceased um, animals and hook up some electrodes and actually um, make them beat in ways that look like they were when they were in the live body. So you can basically reverse engineer how the um, electrical signals in the heart are actually contracting the muscle, the muscle of the heart in such a way that, you know, it sucks blood in and then it pushes blood out, sucks blood in, pushes out. And, um, and from there, yeah, you, you get ECGs. And so now, I mean, we've come a long way. We can just slap some electrodes. You don't have to have somebody sitting in a vat of water um, in order to uh, measure the galvanic response. You just slap a couple of electrodes on them and um, measure, um, measure it that way. Um, amplify the signal. You don't have to use some sensitive galvanometer. You can send that data out on, um, you know, digitally or analog, and and um, and plot that data. So, yeah, um, a, a nice, <laughs> nice little kit. Once again, like holy smokes, um, Hackerbox, you've done it one more time. I mean, really. Uh, and then there's the bio. Um, the bio kits that they're coming out with, I, w I would definitely subscribe to a, a biohacking kit, 100%. Um, I am there as soon as as soon as you release it. Um, but in terms of other um, biological process, well, semi biological processes, um, maybe uh, a, a kit that um, investigates um, process control, bio. Uh, chemical process control might be fun. Something, you know, where you monitor pH and um, temperature. I mean, are the two obvious ones. But temperature, pH, viscosity, and flow rate are probably get you, I don't know, would that get you 80% of um, industrial um, automation um, process control for at least fluids anyways? Maybe. I don't know. So yeah, that would that that would be a fun kit too. But anyways, you guys, nice, very nice. Like it a lot. Um, I'm, I I don't know where I'm gonna go from here on this one, but um, uh, the output is kind of noisy, so it needs to be filtered. I don't know if I've got it in me to write some filters for um, smoothing that signal out or throwing away the noise, or maybe I just have to do a bit better with uh, applying the. Um, applying the uh, uh, electrodes so that they provide a better signal. But anyways, um, might play around with that. Anyways, thank you very much, Hackerbox. That was well, well worth the the wait and the um, investment of time. I thoroughly enjoyed myself so far. Anyways, thanks for watching, everyone. And I hope you have as much fun with this thing as I did because it was a blast. <laughs>